Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. Hi, I'm Tom Galuzzo. I'm the founder of IM Robotics, and you're listening to the New Warehouse Podcast. And this is my safety tip. If you're going to have mobile robots in your warehouse, it's always helpful to put down some safety tape on the floor to mark off where those robots are going to be operating so that your people driving around in forklifts or walking around the warehouse know that there's going to be some potentially mobile robot working in that same area so that they know that they're entering a zone that they should pay attention. With e-commerce off the charts, many small and growing warehouses are asking, how can I get ahead when my warehouse is barely keeping up? The answer is future-ready warehouse tech from Zebra Technologies. Warehouses can simplify and upgrade all processes, from automated inventory management to hands-free picking, with Zebra's tailored, scalable mobile solutions. They're simple and intuitive. There's never been a better time to upgrade for success with Zebra. How can your warehouse get ahead? The answer's in black and white. Get the answers at zebra.com slash the answer. That's zebra.com slash the answer. Fulfillment demand continues to skyrocket and outpace available labor. To keep up, warehouse operators are turning to flexible fulfillment solutions like Six River Systems. Utilizing Six River Systems' award-winning combination of collaborative robots, artificial intelligence, and operational expertise will make your associates and wall-to-wall fulfillment workflow more efficient. No new infrastructure, no change to warehouse layout, easy to deploy and scale, easy to train and retain associates, all at half the cost of traditional automation. Want to take your fulfillment operation to the next level? Level? Go to www.sixriver.com to learn more. That's www.sixriver.com to learn more. The New Warehouse Podcast, hosted by Kevin Lawton, is your source for insights and ideas from the distribution, transportation, and logistics industry. A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. Hey, it's Kevin Lawn with the New Warehouse Podcast, bringing you a new episode today. And in today's episode, I am going to be joined by Tom Galuso. He is the founder and CEO of I Am Robotics. And he's going to tell us about I Am Robotics. And he's going to talk to us about their, their two different offerings, the Bolt and the Swift. And we're also going to talk a little bit about their new partnership with Tompkins Robotics, which may be paving the way for some more collaboration in the robotics world. So, Tom, welcome to the show. How are you? Thanks, Kevin. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing well. Happy to connect with you. We're, we're not so far away from each other. You know, you're over in Pittsburgh. I'm in New Jersey. So why don't you tell us a little, tell us a little bit about the, the robotic scene in, in Pittsburgh? Yeah, Pitts, Pittsburgh is really has really blown up in recent years. There's a ton of robotic startups. There's a lot of driverless car startups. I think we have billions of dollars in capital that have poured into the economy over the past couple of years from all of these startups and, and driverless car companies. All of that stems from originally Carnegie Mellon University, where they basically train a generation's worth of robotics scientists how to develop all these new autonomous robots and, and sophisticated mobile vehicles, autonomous vehicles, and so forth. Mm. And that's just opened up the ecosystem for all of these technologies to come to different markets and, and all these startups and so forth to start to go after new market opportunities. So right. it's, it's really cool. There's, there's something called the robotics row in Pittsburgh, which is mm-hmm. basically a, a long strip area of the city where along a couple of the major, major streets, yeah. you just have robotics company after robot company all within you know half a minute's walk from each other really? so um yeah ton, tons of cool stuff happening 
Definitely, yeah, yeah. It's pretty interesting how there's kind of these, I guess, pockets in the country where these are spurring up. Because I know in Massachusetts, like a big hub, and now Pittsburgh too. It sounds like it's, it's pretty cool stuff. So, so you you're the founder and CEO of I Am Robotics. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about I Am Robotics and tell us about how to you know the idea to to found this company and create this company kind of came about? Yeah, absolutely. So. I am Robotics is really an autonomous mobile robotics company. We're mm-hmm. we're bringing mobile robots into warehousing and logistics and some manufacturing environments where, generally speaking, folks want to move things from point A to point B in the warehouse without having to install a lot of expensive conveyor or expensive capital. The the really the the, the first technology that we brought to market. We're really the only company to commercialize what we call AMMRs, which is Autonomous Mobile Manipulation Robots. So our robots are the only ones that anyone's really been able to commercialize that are able to drive around. And they also have a robot arm on top of them that's able to grab products and pick them off a shelf for order fulfillment. The company got started, it was about eight years ago. I was at Carnegie Mellon University. We were working on some really advanced autonomous robotics technology for the Department of Defense. It was a, there was a group within the DOD called DARPA, which is the Defense right. Advanced Research Projects Agencies. And they, they do all of the advanced, basically, R&D for the military. And you have all these really challenging problems that they put out there to universities and PhDs across the country to try to solve what they call DARPA hard problems. And one of the, mm-hmm. one of the, problems that we were working on was for a program called RMS, which is autonomous robotic manipulation software. Okay. And so you basically DARPA built these robots and they were just blank robots that had no intelligence, no software on them. And they gave them those five different competitive teams around the country and said, Hey, you guys write the artificial intelligence software to bring these things to life. And so we had to program the robots to see things on a table, pick up the objects, move them around. And we got really confident that we could get a robot to some, do some pretty basic autonomous, you know, grasping tasks and stuff yeah. like that. And that's what ended up being the, the founding inspiration behind nine robotics to have robots basically pick things up autonomously mm. in, in a logistics environment in a warehouse and, and move it around. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I've heard of DARPA and a couple of the, different robotics companies we've had on the show have kind of also got their roots from there as well. So I'm curious, actually, you know, it seems like a lot of the robotics companies in like the logistics space have kind of like come from this DARPA thing. And, you know, why, why do you think the logistics is like such a natural transition, like for, for robotics? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I would say that, Right now, logistics is right at the intersection of basically need for automation and what the latest robotic technologies are are just now capable of doing. Mm. So what I mean by that is imagine Rosie the robot from the Jetsons cleaning up a robot, you know, driving around your house, cleaning things up and, and talking with the kids and so forth. Robot. It's really, they're not able to do that kind of stuff yet. We're we're mm-hmm. a pretty long ways out before robots can work in a totally unstructured environment and reason about you know how to how to keep your house organized and clean. Logistics is a more f- basically structured problem mm-hmm. for the robots to solve, and, and mostly where the robots are at today is we can we can get robots to think about how to navigate their way through a fairly complicated space mm. and move from themselves from one side of a building to another without needing a human in the loop and without needing any wire guides or anything like that so they can kind of look look and find their way around the warehouse and they have a map of the warehouse and understand how to navigate within that map that's that's effectively the fundamental technology change that has caused robots to be able to enter the job and do the jobs that that, that are needed within the logistics industry. On the other end of the spectrum, or on the other hand, you also have the logistics industry growing exponentially, from, mm. mostly from e-commerce. And so the demand is there for 
you know, they can't find enough labor and people to do all these logistics jobs. And so it's the perfect intersection. You got the demand because the logistics world is kind of exploding. It's, it needs more and more labor every year. And on the other hand, robotics are just now able to do the kind of work that's required hmm. parts of the kind of work that are required in, in warehousing. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think it's pretty interesting how, um, it's cool too, you know, how we're a part of the, the warehousing industry and that's really where so much technology is really like just coming up and, and booming in the last few years, it seems like, you know, from robotics to AI and machine learning and computer vision, all these different things, it's like happening in our, in our space. It's, it's really cool stuff. So, so it's interesting how, you know, these, I guess, Department of Defense projects are, are leading to, to the logistics world as well, because, you know, I guess, uh, Logistics essentially, you know, has it has its roots in in the military itself. So that's kind of like what sure. really kind sure. of spurred logistics. So so it's really interesting stuff. So I, I appreciate your you know your your feedback there on that. And you know, you mentioned in there your project was with the robotic arm and trying to get it to manipulate things. So I know that's you know I think that's one of your offerings, the Swift offering, if, I, if I'm correct, and you offer the the Swift and the Bolt. So why don't you talk to us about the the two different offerings and, you know, what, what they do and, you know, how they can be utilized in an operation. We'll be back after a quick break. You hear a lot about supply chains these days, because if the past couple years have taught us anything, it's that an efficient, well-managed supply chain is absolutely critical to keeping businesses successful and consumers happy. I'm Will Haywood and I host a podcast called All Business, No Boundaries, where we talk about supply chains how they work, what happens when they don't, and the innovations that are redefining what's possible in the world of logistics. Join me for insightful interviews with thought leaders and industry experts. We discuss how optimizing supply chains can break down the barriers that are holding businesses back. That's All Business, No Boundaries by DHL Supply Chain. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah, sure. So our, our Swift product is really kind of our claim to fame because mm-hmm. we're, we're really the only company out there that's, that's commercializing, as I mentioned, autonomous mobile manipulation robots or AMMRs. Mm-hmm. And these robots are actually, they combine kind of a, basically a robot arm, a manipulator with a, a traditional autonomous mobile robot. So I think it's kind of been an industry dream for decades to put robot arms on top of mobile robots to be able to have them drive around a warehouse and mm-hmm. pick out objects up, move them around for order fulfillment, for, for you know, picking products, basically, when orders come into the warehouse. So what Swift does is when orders come in to the warehouse they go to you know the the warehouse management system the wms the wms sends those orders on to basically what we have something called swift link which is is like a warehouse control system for a bunch of robots okay and we process all that data and we basically tell the robots where to go in the map of the facility to find those items so our robots are currently able to pick things like light lightweight groceries, consumer packaged goods, a lot of health and beauty products. We're doing a scale deployment right now with a company called AS Watson in the Netherlands, where about 50% of their products in this facility, it's all health and beauty stuff. About 50% of them are going to be picked by Swift. So we have 12 Swifts all driving, you know, up and down all these aisles, dozens of aisles of products and finding the items on a shelf and picking them, batching them together. And then there, those items are brought basically in a batch, in a tote, onto a conveyor where they go downstream to a put wall okay. to be sorted out for fulfillment. When we created Swift, we ended up basically creating one of the most capable mobile robots or just plain old AMRs, autonomous mobile robots, that is on the market. Mm. Because when you put a robot arm on top of an AMR, you need a lot of power, so you need a huge battery. You need a lot of battery capacity. And Swift is designed to run, you know, 10, 12 hours mm. in a warehouse on a shift without needing a battery change. We actually have a swappable battery, and this is 
giant hundred pound battery built and patented some really cool mechanisms around how you can basically press a button. The battery slides right out of the robot. It has its own wheels and you can slide a new battery in. Oh, cool. And so we're packaging that base of Swift into a standalone product. That's a general use case AMR. And we call that bolt mm. and, and bolt is really for its size, the most capable, powerful, payload heaviest payload capacity amr on the market mm. so we're getting a ton ton of interest right now from folks that just want to do general pick up and drop off applications with amrs where we can put a section of conveyor that's maybe a couple feet long on top of bolt and instead of having to install you know 200 feet of conveyor mm. in a warehouse to move a handful of products across the space you can bring in a couple of bolts with these conveyor sections on them. They can dock with a conveyor on one end of the facility, mm. do a pickup of a tote or a case, and then bring it to the adjacent opposite end of the facility, dock with another section of conveyor or some other conveyor buffer, and drop that case off, maybe pick some items back up, and then bring them back to the opposite side of the warehouse. So um, there's a that's just one you know, pick up and drop off is just one use case of AMRs. There's potentially lots of use cases around sortation. Yeah. We have some folks that we're working with in manufacturing to do what we call mobile machine tending. And that's going to be putting basically a robot arm on top of Bolt to be load parts in and out of CNC machines. Yeah. So there's the, 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 the number of folks out there looking to do cool things with AMRs is just exploding right now. And now a quick break to hear from our sponsor, Supply Chain Mavens. The past year has been full of fascinating and complex supply chain news. From shortages and forecasting challenges, to issues with COVID-19 test components, to the never-before-seen speed to market of the vaccine. In the past year, logistics and supply chain professionals like you have been nothing short of miracle workers. Supply Chain Mavens helps your team to continuously improve by developing tailored training solutions to enhance your team's competencies so they can successfully work across all aspects of supply chain. They offer exam preparation for the coveted APIX certified in logistics, transportation, and distribution designation, as well as education and topics across the supply chain. Visit them at supplychainmavens.net slash new warehouse to learn how they can help you advance your team's performance. That's supplychainmavens.net slash new warehouse. Now back to the show. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely interesting and it's a really cool idea as well. And so I'm curious in the, the swift application of picking, piece picking orders, you know, what's the equivalent of, I guess, a swift to to human pickers like does is swift equal like one human picker or more or how, do, how does that work out more or less yes we, we've gotten the robots to be fast enough that they can pick it, it really depends on how much travel it's just like a human picker it right. depends on how much travel there is between each pick so it mm -hmm. depends on your pick density but we could get swifts up to even with a fair amount of travel required you know, uh, a couple hundred, two, three hundred, you know, items an hour. Mm -hmm. So it's fairly comparable in a in a in a slow moving pick environment where people are walking up and down aisles or picking up a tote, filling that tote up, mm -hmm. walking into the aisles, collecting a bunch of materials, and then bringing the tote back. That kind of scenario, where we're able to get pretty good pick rates that are comparable to what people can do. And the, our first deployments were at a company called Rochester Drug. We were actually able to meet or exceed what their pick workers were doing on a nightly basis with a couple of swift robots so yeah it's 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 pretty it's pretty cool it's it's a very sophisticated system and mm -hmm. robot the robots have you know knowledge of where all the products are in their zone mm -hmm. so we can stock thousands of different SKUs, and, and we have a, basically a big 3d map of where all those items are are stored in the environment and, you know, we can recall that data when we get the orders in from the WMS and send those on to the robot. And we do lots of sophisticated things with the robots, you know, where there's backup slots and they can pick from multiple locations. So if one location runs out of inventory, that kind of stuff, the robots could go to other spots. 
Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's really complex uh, kind of, as you, as you said, but it is really smart solution as well. And it is interesting that, you know, I think there's, you know, sometimes there's, there's skepticism that the robot is going to be able to, to perform as well as a human or, or keep up. And it sounds like you guys have been able to, to match that for the most part, even in, in the one example you said, surpassing what the humans were doing. So, so, I mean, it's really, really good stuff. So additionally, I saw that you guys recently partnered with Tompkins Robotics, I think using their T sort solution. And I'm curious, you know, talk to us, talk to us about that partnership, how it kind of came about and how the two robotic solutions work together and, you know, how, how it kind of evolves what you're, what you're offering to the market. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We met Mike Futch and the Tompkins Robotics team a couple of years ago, and we're really impressed with all the capabilities they have around their T-Sort application. Mm -hmm. Basically, they have uh, a lot of small little mobile robots on these tables that are able to route, quickly route individual units or products to a tote to drop it off for sortation. So uh, you can batch pick a set of goods and then put one item on each robot at a time and the robots will shuttle them around to different totes and drop them off. Hmm. Then the, the challenge there is that on the exit side of the sortation machine, you have all these totes that are getting filled up with products and typically those totes need to be brought to a downstream pack station where somebody's gonna well either just close up the tote and put it put it onto a pallet for shipping or they're going to take the items out of the tote and transfer it into a shipping container right. you know so that can be sent out fedex or whatever what we're doing with tompkins is we're building a robot we're, we're, we're building a brand new system mm -hmm. really with tompkins to automate the exit side of that sortation machine. So our robots are gonna be capable of driving adjacent to the Tompkins sortation machine, picking up full totes that are ready to be sent down to the, the shipping area and replacing those totes into the sortation uh, racks with empty totes so that the, the robots can keep filling them up without having to have a lot of people do that swapping. So the system that we're developing, Tompkins has branded it the exchange system. Right. And I think it's going to really improve the overall efficiency of, of the sortation operation and reduce the labor head required, the headcount required to be able to man the machine. Mm. And really, it's exciting because this is the first time, one of the first times really I, I've heard of robots helping robots. Yeah. In, in a warehouse so these are it's really a system between two companies where you have their solution their robots doing their thing next to a bunch of iron robotics you know robots that are pulling out these totes and swapping them we actually have a design on the table with another integrator right now for i can't i can't mention who it is okay but basically our robots are going to be taking those totes out and then handing them off to yet another robot that's going to be uh -huh. sorting the totes to different conveyor lines mm. that, you know, depending on if the totes are going to a store or if they're going to a, a customer, they're going to be routed to different areas of the, the shipping um, portion of the facility. So it's amazing the kind of end to end almost, you know, it's, it's getting closer and closer to that lights out automation that everyone ever, always talks about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting to see how, how things are evolving in the industry because I think it was like so much focus on, you know, robotics for, for picking, but then, you know, there's all these other functions that are on the other side of picking, whether it's, you know, coming in or going out. So it's really cool how you guys are, are partnering to, to kind of fill those, those gaps and, and get them automated and get more robotics involved. And I love that it's like, you know, it's one robot helping another. Like it's like a, a teamwork thing going on with the, the robots, right? So, so yeah. you know, and it is interesting, like, you know, like you said, you know, I think it's, you know, I haven't heard, certainly heard of, you know, collaboration going on with robotics companies in terms of, you know, sharing technologies and things of that and, you know, being open to each other. And, but I certainly haven't heard of, you know, coming up, I guess, with a, a full solution like this together. So it's, it's pretty, pretty remarkable. And I think it's, it's really uh, a smart idea and it, and it makes sense because it's, you know, you know, one Tompkins is, has this sortation solution that they're excelling at. And then you guys are coming to the market with this solution that you're excelling at as well so it makes sense to to be able to put them together instead of trying to you know, reinvent the wheel i guess again right and 
So I'm curious, you know, from your perspective and, you know, being out there in robotics row, I think you call it in Pittsburgh, right? And kind of having some idea of what's going on in the robotics world, you know, do you think something like this and a partnership like this is going to kind of change the landscape for robotic solutions and, you know, going, I guess, maybe giving even more meaning to the term cobot and collaborative robots, like with uh, different robotics companies yeah. collaborating together? Yeah, this is a new kind of collaborative right. collaboration where we're seeing, you know, robots helping robots and, and robotics companies partnering with other robotics companies to put a more holistic system together. I, I do think it's going to be, there's going to be more and more of this happening. That's what everyone's talking right. about right now is how do you, how do you get robots more efficient and working in these kind of dynamic and collaborative environments. And I, I think one of the biggest challenges about it is that there's so many folks out there doing warehouse automation integration. Mm. They've never used autonomous mobile robots before. Maybe they have some experience with AGVs in the past, but even a lot of them have never done anything mobile. You know, they've done a lot of conveyor. Maybe they've done some shuttle systems, things like that. Well, things of that nature, but there's still mo most of the market has no experience with mobile robots. Mm. And that is one of the biggest challenges for our integrators and our partners that are adopting Bolt and want to want to do cool things with it. We've had to invest a lot of time and energy and know how into building up uh, a simulation library and framework for how you actually deploy autonomous mobile robots. So one of the things that we're doing is when our partners come to us and say, hey, I have a customer that has this interesting application for AMRs. Can you help me figure out what the AMRs would do, how they would do it, how much it's going to cost, what the ROI is going to be? It's so much harder than just putting some numbers numbers into a spreadsheet and running a quick ROI calculation or, you know, saying, oh, it's, it's going to be, you know, two robots, three robots. You, you really, when you get into a mobile robotics, especially as a system where they're going to be doing pick up and drop off or there's going to be any sort of traffic management, the robots need to um, work through a circuit and you got to look at any bottlenecks on intersections and stuff like that. Mm. We actually model that all out in a 3D simulated in FlexSim. Basically, we built up a library of of different different AMR deployments, sortation, routing, and scenarios, and so forth, where we can quickly configure those different layouts for a new customer application, mm -hmm. and then turn around and within a day or two. So one of the things that we've invested heavily in is is simulating our robots and simulating autonomous mobile robots in new warehouse scenarios so that when customers or integrator partners come to us and they have a new cool application they want to try out, we can really accurately and precisely model how many robots you need, what the throughput's going to be, you know, we've had we have a library of basically simulations that we can use as a baseline, mm. and quickly adapt those and turn those around to customers or integrators, so they can see firsthand what the robot utilization will be like. You know, how fast the robots need to travel, if there's going to be any bottlenecking issues at any particular spot in the warehouse, etc. And then from that, you can get a really very very high fidelity confidence around the return on investment for the solution mm -hmm. and, you know, really understand any issues or potential gotchas going into a deployment. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you guys really kind of have thought about everything and it. it's really a smart solution and it's interesting how the, you know, the partnerships too that are developing and you guys kind of, I would say leading the way and then that a little bit with Tompkins. So it's really, really interesting stuff. And, you know, I, I'm really happy to learn about it. And it's interesting as well how it kind of came from the DARPA program, as you were mentioning, in the Department of Defense. So it's interesting how it's, how it's evolved and how it continues to evolve. So, you know, definitely be looking forward to learning about the future of IM Robotics, too, and, and the other solutions that you guys uh, continue to develop. And, the other partnership that you cannot speak of yet, uh, 
definitely be looking for that news. So, so it'll be uh, very interesting. So if people want to find out more information about I am robotics, how, how can they do that? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the easiest way that you can go to our website, it's just I A M robotics.com all one word. And we have contact information on there. They can get in touch. They can learn more about our robots, what we do and what the robots look like and how they're used. All right, great. And we'll put all that information at the new warehouse.com as well. So Tom, I want to thank you so much for your time today and, and thank you for coming on the show. been listening to the new warehouse podcast with kevin lawton subscribe and check us out online at the new warehouse.com thank you for listening to this episode if you want more content from the new warehouse check out our new video series called all hands on linkedin just search for the new warehouse on linkedin and follow along